I've been told on occasion that I am rather impetuous, that I do things spur of the moment without giving them much thought. I kind of find that hard to believe. But let me tell you my little story about rollerblading with my dogs, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, we'll see if I was being impetuous. I had a Malmute. He weighed about 95 pounds. I was looking for something for him to do because he was very active and I had several Malmute people tell me that pulling was a really good thing to get them into. So I took both of my Malmutes to a clinic. Mind you, the clinic was 30 minutes to an hour and they pulled roughly three or four times. And as so often happens to me, I immediately thought, oh my God, they're naturals. They can do this. This will be so much fun. So the next day I went home. I began researching. I found a place that made dog scooters. I got a tow line. I got a helmet and pads for myself. And I ordered harnesses for the dogs. Well, the harnesses came, the tow line came, I had my helmet and my pads, but no scooter. This was totally ticking me off. I am just not a patient person. What was I supposed to do? I really wanted to start this out. They really needed to get into it like now. That's my feeling. So I started to think about it. And it came to me that, you know, my daughter had a pair of rollerblades that she left at my house in the attic. As luck would have it, she has the same size foot as I do. So it was meant to be, right? So I decided right then and there I was going to go out and rollerblade with the dogs. Why not? It made sense. Lots of people rollerblade with dogs. But I wasn't totally stupid. I decided that just because I'd had this major revelation, I did not have to share it with my husband because I knew what he would say. I waited until he was gone one day. I put the harness on Cody, who was the largest, who weighed almost 100 pounds. I was going to take both of them, but at the last minute I thought, are you nuts or what? You really want to try this behind 200 pounds of dog? Maybe you ought to rethink it. I really think I could have even further rethought it, but I didn't. I took Cody out with his harness on and he was already excited. He was probably looking for the tire. Where the heck's the tire? Well, did I have a surprise for him? I had a belt around my waist and I decided to attach the tow line. Absolutely brilliant plan. Why not just have an umbilical cord running between a 100-pound dog and a 40-some-year-old woman? On rollerblades, no less. Hey, it made sense at the time. So I put on my helmet, my pads. I got the tow line hooked to his harness. And I sat there on the grass trying to put on the rollerblades. Here's another little fact. I'd never put on rollerblades in my life. Didn't know how to use them. Didn't know how to do anything on rollerblades. But how hard could it be? I'm athletic. I'm smart. I can do this. Well, I barely made it standing up. But I did it. It was kind of like having ice skates on pavement. It wasn't like the roller skates I was used to. But hey, I got up and I had my umbilical cord hooked to my dog. Was I good or what? All I remember saying basically was, let's go. That was it. He was so smart, he took off right then. The only thing I hadn't counted on, he really liked this. He really wanted to run. And he was hell bent on going from zero to Mach 1 in five seconds. I vaguely remember thinking, this really is not a good idea. What the hell was I thinking? But it was too late. I was in motion. I began screaming. 
I began flailing my arms. Whoa! Whoa! I rattled off more swear words than I care to even admit. I was busy trying to figure out how to stop a roaring train. To no avail, I might add. He wasn't listening. He didn't care. He didn't know the command, so he wasn't disobeying them. As we flew down the street, the houses began to blur. I vaguely remember thinking, Oh. My. God. What am I going to do? I couldn't stop him. I didn't know what to do. If that wasn't bad enough, he quickly went from Mach 1 to Mach 2. How is this possible? This dog doesn't even know this much about this sport, and here he is hurtling himself down the street with me in tow. I might add, at my own choice. Well, I didn't have a pair of scissors, so I wasn't going to be able to cut loose. I didn't have a release valve, so I could not let him go. I also noticed as we're flying down the road that there is a huge intersection with a lot of traffic because it's rush hour. Why hadn't I thought of this? Oh, I have a clue why I hadn't thought of this because I'm impulsive. What to do? Well, I figured any minute we would get to the intersection, maybe a couple seconds the way he was flying, and I could be roadkill, or road rash, or both. I might hit a car, they might run over both of us, I might bounce up on a car, get thrown 50 feet, maybe, but it was not going to be pretty. What was I going to do? I began putting down the toe of the rollerblade because I vaguely remembered my daughter saying something about, oh mom, you can handle these because there's a break. Oh, that's the solution. So I put the toe down. <laughs> Nothing. Do you think I'm slowing down? No, but I did smell smoke. Maybe it was the heel. Okay, I'll put the heel down now. <laughs> Am I slowing down? No. In fact, there's more smoke. Now I'm trying both at the same time. <laughs> Nothing. Well, there's no other option. Somebody's got to stop this moving train, and it ain't going to be him. So, I vaguely recalled in my mind seeing Artie Johnson of Laugh-In throwing himself down on his bike. Not by choice, probably, but he used to just fall down. I figured, what have I got to lose? Too bad there wasn't any grass. Too bad there wasn't anything but pavement and gravel. So as we approached closer and closer to the intersection, and I knew he was not going to slow down, I decided, Audrey, take one for the team. I threw myself down with all the dignity that I could muster. Powerful little. It did jerk him to a halt. It made him stop and turn around like, what the heck was that? as he stood over me with a kind of chagrin look on his face. I said, Cody, sorry about that, but I couldn't get you to stop, bud. Here we are. Well, I examined my hands. I had some gravel in them. That was cool. I had ripped my pants. That was cool. And as I sat on the side of the road, painfully aware of an error in judgment, let's say, Cars began to stop, doors opened, doors slammed, people came running towards me. Are you okay? Oh my God, that was some kind of fall. I responded easily. Heck no, I do this kind of stuff all the time. Little back dean, I'll be good as new. What the heck, we were just practicing. Go on about your business. As they drove off into the sunset, I very carefully took off the rollerblades and threw them as far as I could throw them. I then walked home, limping I might add, with my dog, with my pads, with my helmet. And if that wasn't bad enough, just as I got to the driveway, my husband turned in, in the car. He rolled down the window and said, 
You have got to be kidding me. Wasn't the first time I heard that. Wasn't the last time I've heard that. I just looked at him and shrugged. I got in the car. He very kindly didn't say very much. And drove back to the part of the road where I had thrown the rollerblades. I picked them up. I took them home and put them back in the attic where they belonged forever. Get away from me. Don't talk to me. Moral of the story is, if you're going to do something with Malmutes, make sure they're trained. If you're going to do something that you've never done before, like try rollerblades, give it a thought. Learn how to use the equipment. Great idea, Audrey. At least I live to tell the tale. And as an epilogue, my dogs did learn how to pull. It still was comical, but they did learn how to do it, and I survived. Thanks for listening, and happy dogging.